Hey everybody, welcome to Back Issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Tiffany. So about probably like eight or nine years ago, we ended up talking a little bit about the Batman Spawn crossover. Or rather, we talked about the Spawn Batman crossover. But we never talked about the Batman Spawn crossover. And we're gonna talk about the Spawn Batman crossover. <laughs> because we didn't really dedicate enough time to it. Mm. And there's reasons that we'll get into as to why I want to talk about these specifically right now. Mm. And there's a lot to unpack about these. How could that be? I know, right? <laughs> it's just this crazy intercompany crossover that like everyone and no one asked for and they made two of them. Now, of course, back in the 90s when they were doing those intercompany crossovers, part of the deal usually was that uh, if we're doing a crossover, you do one and we do one. So Image had one that was Spawn Batman and DC did one that was Batman Spawn. And one was a massive event and the other happened. One of them is infamous, and the other one is forgotten. And I'll leave it up to you guys to decide what's better. So I have this. Why? <laughs> what the hell is that? This is what? a two-pack that oh. includes both crossovers. This set includes two books, <laughs> the 11 by 22 poster, which of course, don't worry, we have it already. Right. This is suggested retail, 1085. What? Well, yeah. What did you pay for it? Personally, I paid a dollar for this. Is this like, how old is this? This is 30 years old. Yeah. No. Well, how long have you had it? I mean, it looks. I have had it for two years. Uh, it looks I bought like it at a comic book store. Mint condition. It is in yeah. mint condition because they printed a bazillion of these. Oh, oh man. You know, these are in pristine condition. They're under like plastic, so, and I don't want to. I wouldn't open it because it has the like merging of the Spawn and Batman logos. Like this is a custom piece that is made specifically for this. So this is right when the bubble was bursting. Yes, it yeah. was the year the bubble burst. A graveyard, a graveyard. Yeah. Uh, you can't you can't have one without the other, but everyone always just talks about this one. But with what do you, mean you can't have one without the other. Well, because they both came out at the same time. Yeah, yeah. but I mean like do I have was, to read both of them? You absolutely do not. These are not these are not these are in two different universes. Oh. Were they the same characters? They are the same characters. Spawn okay. and Batman are both Al Simmons and Bruce Wayne, respectively. And and this each one hap like the like the one that came first happened to the one that came second? No. Holy crap, oh. are there two different universes then in the DC like multiverse, multiverse right yeah, there, now? There, there are like two Batman spawn crossover uni- No, uh, we'll talk more about this and what universe this is in later. <laughs> okay. But this is the one that everyone's talking about because- Yeah, please. <laughs> uh, because this one is written by Frank Miller and drawn by Todd McFarlane. Like this is the yeah, big one. Oh, that's okay. the superstar. Yeah, yeah, that was the image book. That's the one that Todd could get because of course when Spawn launched, they were like, all right, Todd's writing and drawing Spawn. And then at some point he was like, I'm creating my Spawn empire and I don't have a fucking time to write this shit. So he got a couple of people to help fill in for him. People like Frank Miller and Neil Gaiman and Alan Moore and Grant Morrison. And then this came out. And so he had to take a big break because he was drawing the shit out of this. And he was of course drawing Spawn until Greg Capullo came in to help fill in for him. And so he had to work on this. And so two issues of Spawn were just skipped. Oh. What? What? So what? Skipped? Skipped. So Spawn because number 18 came out and then Spawn number 21 came out. And people were like, uh, where's 19 and 20? And he's like, those will be explained and released after the Spawn Batman crossover happens. Uh, what? And they will have nothing to do with the Spawn Batman crossover or everything to do with it. We'll figure that out later. Spoilers, it doesn't have anything to do with the Spawn Batman crossover, but it also wants you to think it does. But we'll get to that later. For now, we'll talk about the DC situation because <laughs> look, Spawn and Batman are crossing over. Why? Because they're the top two best-selling superheroes in the comic book world right now. We gotta get mm -hmm. these two together. Yeah. Well, it's it's clearly one is helping the other, but one is helping the other in a more significant way. For example, I don't have the sales data on the crossovers, except to say that Spawn Batman was the number one selling comic book of 1994. Really? Not Batman Spawn. Right. But Spawn Batman. Yeah, because this one's Image. And Image was like, well, and Frank outselling Miller, DC at that time, Frank right? Miller, Todd McFarlane, yeah. yeah, and it was outselling DC. Yeah. But DC was not without its sales. I did look at some numbers for the year, and I picked like one of the Spawn and Batman issues that were coming out around that time. This data comes from Comicron, but uh, Spawn, an issue from 1994 that came out, 210,000 copies pre-ordered. Jesus. 
The next highest is Batman with 110,000 copies pre-ordered. Wow. So while Spawn is double <laughs> Batman, Batman is still crushing it. Right, mm. compared to other books. Compared to the rest. Or any book now. And the yeah. rest. And, or any book now, yeah, that's true. Yeah, can you imagine they're going like, oh man, it only sells 110,000 copies. Jesus, we might need to cancel this book. <laughs> so that those are the numbers we're talking about here. So like, when DC got the opportunity to print their own Batman book, Denny O'Neill was the editor of the Batman titles and of course, in charge of corralling this thing. So Batman Spawn is drawn and colored by Klaus Janssen. So Janssen is inking and penciling it and coloring it alongside Steve Buccioletto who's doing the computer colors, whatever the hell that means. But this 48 page comic book is written by Doug Mensch, Chuck Dixon, and Alan Grant. All three what? of them were Batman writers at the time. I think, and it's not confirmed I don't think, but Denny O'Neill's like, this book is horseshit, and it's gonna sell like crazy. <laughs> and so I'm gonna do my job as an editor and make sure that all my Batman writers get paid crazy good money. Ah, oh, he's like- he's Spreading he's, it around. He's yeah. helping them out. Because this book is written by like half a person. Which of these should you read first if you're gonna read both? Oh man, that's a good question. Because <laughs> one is not a story, and the other one is kinda boring. Like everyone forgets about this one because right. whatever. I'll let you judge. You, you try to remember that because we'll talk okay. about it. I mean, right. I will say there are more skeletons I, in I, this I've one. I've literally like been, like, I have been captivated by the skeleton on the back of this yeah. cover. I actually like the skeleton better than the front of this cover. Yeah, well because. Like, yeah. This is busy and kind of lame. I'll be, t I'll, I'll be honest with you, I remember vividly as a kid not buying Batman Spawn War Devil. Well, it just doesn't Like, like I bought this one because I was reading Spawn and was like, hell yes. This thing, I saw the cover and I'm like, no. I didn't like the sketchiness of Klaus Janssen's art. Mm. I didn't like the, con I, I opened it up and I saw them all talking, a lot of conversations. Yeah, like, oh, I'm like, get that. the fuck out of here. But like this, this skeleton. <laughs> but the skeleton's pretty dope, skeleton it's Klaus Janssen's skeleton. The skeleton, skeleton. Is fire. It is, it's a great skeleton. It's a fire skeleton. Just put him on fire it's and then a you have a dope ghost pose rider. for a skeleton yeah. Yeah, well, he's, yeah, they're all clawing their way yeah, out of grave. He's coming yeah. to get you. Yeah. Dig it. Yeah. He's, he's coming for your skeleton. Because we're all skeletons. <laughs> he's gonna remove really. your skeleton but, but, from you. Yeah, but don't don't get too excited about this. So this don't, story don't opens. Don't get excited about skeletons. Don't get excited about this because it opens at Roanoke Island in North Carolina in 1587. <laughs> this is when, when Virginia Dare is born. And then yeah, excuse me, I've already read the best Virginia Dare story <laughs> ever in yes. 1602. <laughs> well, don't worry, we we get quickly out of there. Oh, okay. But of course, that colony was uh, Croatoa. Croatoa. Well, they they wrote the word Croatoa. Right. Yes, they, they did. Croatoan. Or Croatoan. 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 Yeah. They found it on an unu unusually high place on a tree. It was etched there with no explanation as to what happened to the is colony. This, is this a, do if we, when this is written, already know what happened with Croatoan, or have we not figured that out yet? In 1994, it was always a mystery about what happened no. to the colony we of Croatoan. We hadn't figured it was out a that great it was. Mystery. I do remember that when I, mean, I had to write a fucking paper in the early 90s about it for like my <laughs> middle school, and really? I will tell you that like. My mom was captivated by it and did a whole bunch of research on it because like I didn't write that thing. So she wrote, wrote a paper. Yeah. yeah. And one of the things that she imparted to me was that like they, they, there were like there were natives with children with blue eyes. Mm -hmm. And so there was like this implication that like they were some of them were yeah, we've incorporated. Already, we solved them. Oh, and then we know what happened to them now. But like, yeah. let's let's go back to, to when, a time, to a when, simpler time when mystery was still a thing. Yes, when yeah. mystery Before and we legend had to know existed. the answer to everything. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we, the, you know, later explorers discovered the name Croatoan. No sign of the colony. And if they had drones or <laughs> a, a, a tower, they might have noticed that the colony was carved into a pentagram. And this just looks like a star. It is a star, but like, it's a pentagram. Then we cut to 1994, where Gotham City now is. Because Gotham City is in North Carolina. No it isn't. Where the Roanoke colony is. No, what? It's, no, no, it's not. It just straight up isn't. No. Like, even if you want to say that Gotham is New York City, that's not North Carolina. But Gotham City is in Jersey which is also not North Carolina. But three of the top Batman writers would know that. <laughs> right, but and this, they, they wanted this to happen. They wanted this to and happen. Like, well, this isn't in our universe, so yes. the main DC universe, so it could be anywhere. That's right. There is an obscene amount of blimps. 
There are too many Gotham blimps. Gotham has a lot of blimps. Too many blimps. What are they, they doing with all those blimps? It is very dangerous. Well, some of them are advertisers, some of them are news reporter blimps, some of them are police blimps. Hmm. When That's you just... are a city of blimps, you know. <laughs> is that what they're called, the city of blimps? That's what they should be. Gotham City, the city of blimps. Matches Malone, aka Bruce Wayne, is paying off some informant to get information, bombs and whatnot being funneled yeah. into the city. Okay. Uh, spawns crying in a corner. Does oh. this guy lead them, like, lead so, Batman to the guy who's basically going, like, in Law and Order, going to lead them to the actual? That's right. If uh, this were Law and Order parlance, yeah. This is the guy moving the boxes. Yes. <laughs> Yo, him? I ain't seen him for two months. I don't know. I don't have time for this, though. Yeah, so the first guy leads us to that guy. Yeah, but that guy is going to have a more grisly fate than the box moving guy. Oh, so oh. who knows? That? We never see what happens to the box moving guy. We just move on. It's that's just doink, doink, and rarely. we're done. Yeah, that's yeah. right. But uh, so Batman is led to Gotham Tower, which is this massive tower. Sure. And, uh, you know, and, and it's, by the way, it's being built. Like it, it had, it was a long standing construction project that had been. Uh, under the purveyance of a guy named Vesper. And Simon Vesper was a character they created for this, who is like this wealthy aristocratic guy who had this tower constructed under very specific circumstances with very specific mm. uh, requirements. And you can imagine where this is going. Yeah. You've seen Ghostbusters, you know. And so, uh, you know, Batman's led to this tower, which is almost ready to go, and they're ha gonna have their opening ceremony very soon. Uh, meanwhile, Spawn uh, sees a conveniently placed newspaper, which announces that Gotham Tower is being opened, and it unlocks some memories for Spawn, which oh. is that Simon Vesper has been dead for years. Simon Vesper, of course, was in charge of building Gotham Tower, but is now no longer with us. And Spawn remembers that he's the guy who was hired to kill Simon Vesper. So Spawn knows the fate of Simon Vesper. By the way, what people the? suspect that Simon Vesper is dead, but no one ever found a body, and Simon Vesper just kind of disappeared. So Is Simon Vesper a character from Spawn? Nope, he's not a character from anything. He now is an original character in the Spawn Batman universe that only exists in this one book anywhere ever. I feel like it would be ever. more meaningful to have a character tied to one of their Right, mythos. but then, then Todd might have ownership or claim to that character, forget it. Okay. And you know, Todd's notorious for that because like, you know, Neil Gaiman invented Angela and then Todd just thought he owned her. So. <laughs> Anyway, Spawn kills this guy, and Spawn is not a hired gun, but like no three Batman writers know that or care. Right. So, hey, wasn't know, he a soldier? He's a soldier. He was like a yeah, not a, a fortune. Like he worked. Right. He was like a he was like a black ops yeah. military spook. Yeah. But well, in this case, he wouldn't be employed to like murder people no. on American soil. No. Who are just like wealthy industrial. That's so right. Yeah. And that's all that they know him to be. But the point <laughs> is, you need to know. They need to know a few things. One, Simon Vesper built this tower. Two, he was murdered by Spawn before he became Spawn. But as far as Gotham's concerned, he just left. And so all of his shit is just like in the, uh, you know, in, in the bank. Basically, like, if right. Simon Vesper 2 were- waiting for him to come back. Exactly. Okay. Even though that would not happen because it's been years since Simon Vesper was assassinated. Okay. So Spawn's like, this is confusing. These are connected. I have no reason to do this, but I'm going to Gotham to check it out. Okay. That's it. I'm going to Gotham because I just got told by this convenient newspaper that, that Vesper's tower is going to be opened, and it made me think of the fact that I killed Simon Vesper, so off I go. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> three fucking writers. The box mover, as you will, <laughs> yeah. who is also the bomb mover who is funneling in these like terrorists. Oh, these bombs? Yeah, oh, these bombs? <laughs> I'm being really, uh, really ginger with these. No, so he meets with these other guys to talk about like the bombs and stuff that he brought and smuggled into Gotham. Right. So that guy explains that Yes, he's the guy who moved the does, bombs in. Does he have them in his trench coat? I see he's wearing a big trench coat. That's just big. It's just, like, that's just blocky cuss dancing. What do you dancing. think? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now these are, he moved a lot of explosives into okay. Gotham. Uh, so while Batman goes to confront the bomb mover, uh, he is haunted by the memory of tracking down Simon Vesper and seeing that Simon Vesper's head was blown off by oh, Al Simmons. Batman was there. Batman was there. Was there the day and, that Vesper died. He didn't ID the assassin. He was just really good. He got right. away. That's how good yeah. Spawn was before he even became Spawn. That was six years he ago, by Batman. the way. So don't forget, in the ba in the Spawn mythos, I don't know if they even care, but Spawn was, Spawn died. And when he was brought back, he was returned for him instantaneously, but it was five years in the future. Right. So this, this assassination five took place- Five years later. <laughs> 
Clearly the Russos were inspired by Spelunky. <laughs> but the box mover's name is Virgil Dare. Ugh. Oh. You know, He's related. keeping it part of the family, I yeah. guess. But uh, he has been buying up a bunch of like random properties all across Gotham and buying them from Wayne Corp, which for me says, uh, how did how come if you're suspicious of it, why did you let it happen at all? I guess because he's being Batman and he's just really negligent. But <laughs> I'm not paying attention to anything. Exactly. Or he wanted to let it happen to build up a case. Mm. That's what he'll tell himself later. Yeah. Yeah. I'm but, luring them in. Yeah. It's a honey trap. So Dare uh six his goons onto Batman. Batman beats the shit out of them. By the way, these are private security guys. These are not like goons. They right. have every right to be here. They have a, they're have they getting a paycheck and... Yeah, and yeah. a 401k, yeah, which yeah. they're going Batman to need is, to collect is on. trespassing on private property. Which, of course, he says. And uh, he also explains that, like, no, I'm doing a job for Simon Vesper. And Batman's like, Vesper's dead. There's no way. And he goes, hey, listen, there's no body. <laughs> and Batman can't say, like, well, I watched his head explode. <laughs> Why can't he, goes, he say that? Because, well, I guess he could. <laughs> But he doesn't. Uh, well, I guess because he wants Dare to keep talking oh, and explain himself. Yeah, yeah. Which, of course, he says, like, no, like, when, Ves when Vesper disappeared, he left a detailed plan of, like, what he wanted to have happen at, in the event he went away. Mm -hmm. And in that plan, it involved Dare purchasing all these properties all across Gotham. To resurrect him? No. What? Oh. That's right. Something worse. But we are going to see his dream realized because with the opening of Gotham Tower, this is the final step. And Batman's like, this is weird because Vesper is a dirty guy. Like, that's why I was investigating because he was also, like, mobbed up. Spawns in Gotham. He's doing his thing. Meanwhile, at Vesper's grave, his skeleton blasts out of the ground. He has a effing gravestone. He was buried in the ground. So everyone should know what? he was dead. Is he killing animals as he goes past? Is he taking their lives? Is that what we're supposed to think is happening here? Yeah, he needs other living things to be able to pull oh, it's in like the their- mummy. Yeah, it's like the mummy. But a skeleton. Yeah. <laughs> so way cooler. I mean, I guess the mummy is a skeleton. Yeah, under yeah. all those wraps, he's a skeleton. Yeah, well, no, like I said earlier, we're all skeletons. That's right. We are all no, skeletons. there's a rat on he, on the skeleton, so he takes the life essence from the rat, then he sees a cat, takes that. Is that all he needed was like one thing to come to him, or is it just all timing? It's all synchronicities. It, it is all timing. Simon so Vesper's back, and he gets some clothes, and he gets on TV, and he's like, ladies and gentlemen, I'm back, and I'm feeling better than ever, and I can't wait to inaugurate the tower that's the culmination of my dreams. And Batman's like, what the absolute fuck is happening? <laughs> so. Hang on, can we see that skeleton real quick? Mm -hmm. Shouldn't it like be destroyed? Yeah, it shouldn't have a face or a head. I'm guessing that the skeleton formed in the ground and then like you know. Well, oh, they got up. all the pieces. No, I'm saying that it probably grew. Look, the, this isn't the same skin. It's new skin, so it's probably new I, skull. I just, I'm just saying. So Batman sees this happen on TV, and he's like, "Oh well, I guess I got a Batman up." Meanwhile, Spawn's like walking around Gotham City, and he sees all those, you know, that that business that doesn't exist, where there's a whole bunch of TVs, and they're <laughs> all sh like playing the news, and that news is conveniently related to whatever's like yep. going on in your life. Yeah, that. And yeah. there's a ton of them, and you can hear the TV through the glass. Mm -hmm. Spawn is having that moment right now, <laughs> and he sees that Be Vesper's back, and he's like. Wait a minute. I killed that guy. He's back. It has everything to do with this tower. I'm gonna have to investigate the freaking tower. So Vesper is brought up by Dare to go into the tower. And then Vesper, of course, like kills Dare. He cuts his throat oh. and then coats his hand in blood and makes a star shape around Dare's body. That's a After, really good star shape. Yeah, it's made. really well, hard to draw a star. It's an yeah. artist. He's really good at drawing everything, and he has to draw the star. But he drags Dare into the basement. So Batman goes to the tower. I love how everybody just goes to the tower, then leaves and comes back to the tower, and nothing <laughs> happens in between. But uh, so Batman gets the tower. He goes to the elevator. The elevator's covered in blood, and he's like, it's like a slaughterhouse in here. It's like, <laughs> a, it's like a lot of blood. How did nobody notice this? But, but he me. also sees a thumbprint in blood that mm. leads to the basement. He's like, <gasps> okay. So he goes down to the basement, and he finds Virgil Dare's now like desanguinated body because he has expelled all of his blood, the, sh the star shape, and for added bonus, what he doesn't know is that uh, Vesper wrote the word Croatoan. But the added bonus to this grisly scene is that uh, Vesper has written the word Croatoan in Dare's blood on the floor. Okay. And Batman's like, Okie dokie. Just like with the colony. Oh what? shit! What? Except not because they didn't. It wasn't. It wasn't blood, blood it was and it had nothing to do with any of this. But yeah. yeah. So, Spawn shows up. He's checking it out. He sees some activity. Uh, Batman leaves at the same time. So Spawn sees Batman, and he's like, "Huh? 
what's, what's Batman he all doing about? Here? Yeah. Does Don't they live in the same Batman world? Is? They do live in the same world. Do you mean to tell me no one has ever talked about Batman? They've never referenced each other. They have no idea of each other's existence. I could see it. Batman not knowing about Spawn. Spawn oh, operates yeah. a little more under the radar. It's and true. It's supernatural. Alleys, but like, yeah. it's Batman? I don't know. I agree. So Spawn encounters Batman in this awesome double page splash where Spawn and Batman both look scared out of their minds. Because Spawn assumes that Batman is a demon sent by Malbolgia to torment him like Violator. Well, he's got a cape just like me. Yeah. Yeah, but he also clearly has a face. <laughs> he's a guy. Also, you know him because he's fucking Batman. Nope. Nope, he's a demon. I don't know him. Demon. But Spawn assumes that this is a demon that's sent to give him a hard time. So they fight in midair. You know, Batman's just like, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> hey, look at you. You're, you're, you're in this crazy outfit. You yeah. must be a demon. So you, you've got like, the pointy wait, you ears. Just, exactly. You just dress like this? Right. <laughs> yeah, no, you got to be a demon. Yeah, exactly. I don't uh, buy him. Yeah, Batman I'm even says to dress like this. this is a terrible attempt at humor. Of course, like thanks uh -huh. to, the, to these three terrific celebrated Batman writers, right. he says, uh, "What the devil are you talking about?" And Spawn's like, "What are you making fun of me? Oh my god, are you making devil references?" Uh, so anyway, Spawn uses a magic power that we never see before or since, mm. in which he like uses his abilities to send demons back to hell. Something we've never seen, and he doesn't use. And uh, that's what, like someone being like, he did it in this obscure issue. Of right, exactly. Yeah. Thank you, commenter. But mm -hmm. Batman doesn't go anywhere, and he's like, oh, you're still here, huh? Oh, I guess you're not. A demon. I guess you're just Batman. I guess we'll stop this fight. Yeah, so, no, and then, then Batman fight. kicks him in the face, and he's like, ah. <laughs> okay, so, now we're even. Dirty. Right. So they fight, and while they fight, Spawn is like, wow. This guy's kicking my ass, and I couldn't feel better. Like, this is amazing. I feel so alive. Like, I feel desperation and fear. Like, I might actually lose this damn thing. And then Batman's like, wow, you must be, like, new to this whole thing. Like, you're wearing a cape, you're wearing a costume, <laughs> but I just mop the floor with you because it's a DC book. Right, and I would. I'm just piggybacking off of your financial success. I, I, yeah. I'm not I showing you the equals. For you. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so Spawn's just like, listen, Simon Vesper, I, I'm here to deal with him because this building is his like brainchild and he's up to no good. And Batman's like, yes, that's true. Like this building is a mystery, hmm. hmm. And also I found a pentagram. We see it as a star. And I think that they want us to like be surprised by the fact that it's actually like an upside down star or a pentagram. <laughs> but like, yeah, but no one does that. And Batman's <laughs> just like, it's a pentagram. So Spawn's like, a pentagram, hmm. And so Spawn, so Batman's like, I guess we should team up. I'm Batman, you are? And Spawn goes, uh, you can call me Al. <laughs> Cue the song. Yeah. So Batman says we should team up. He doesn't say that specifically. He says, uh, I've got an idea that you might know something about it. Like he goes, he goes, what do I call you? That's what I he says. See. Like, no, he just includes Spawn on his investigation. Right. Okay. Because you that come means with me because gonna be... you're gonna screw something up. Yeah, I yeah. really don't need you just fumbling around with your yeah. cape and, sh and chains. Wrecking all the evidence that I need to collect. Yeah. Evidence. So one of the security guards that helped like facilitate the like bomb planting throughout Gotham yeah. uh, contacts uh, Simon Vesper and is like, hey man, I did the I did the thing, what do I do now? And he's like, oh, uh, you can go. You're fine, doesn't matter, bye. He's okay. like, cool, wow. Like, he didn't murder me or cut half my face off or like <laughs> make me you know ingest some kind of laughing gas. Like, he just paid me for something that's clearly illegal and then he uh, let me go. Awesome, so mm. we'll never see him again. And this guy's just like, sweet. Uh, and then Simon Vesper is in his office. They set up an office for him. And uh, he proceeds to monologue. Who's they? The, the people who helped make this uh, dream a reality of a tower. Ah, oh, I see. So he uh, proceeds. Just in case he came back, they had this office ready for him. It was all part of his very specific right. instructions. instructions. yeah. But uh, Vesper proceeds to monologue to no one, someone. Uh, we'll find out if that's true or not in a little bit. Where he's like, there, I've done it. No one on earth can stand against me now. I've brought you 100 souls and I'll bring you a thousand fold more. So Batman doesn't trust Spawn. He invites Spawn no. to like a secret kind of like garage. What? That was when I was a kid. I was like, they were in a garage looking at maps on the hood of the Batmobile. I'm the fuck out. <laughs> What says, what, what, what's saying deet in that? A oh, signal from more, his mainframe. There's more deets. I thought he was pointing at something like, and making deet, a deet, deet, deet. Yeah, it's like, that's a smart map. No, <laughs> they're looking at a map that's a regular of map. the city that is regular, made of paper. It's doing a search that's sending data to the bat computer. Because Spawn's just like, whoa, you have like cars and maps and computers and stuff? I, like, I, I like know like nothing a, about you. Are you like a super rich guy or something? Right, exactly. Batman's like, oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> Better ring. Batman is used the computer to like basically uh, calculate an algorithm that figures out like why all those specific locations that Vesper slash Dare bought up uh -huh. were chosen. Like what's right. the what's the strategic advantage of having all those buildings? Uh huh. And so he's like, hmm. And then uh, he says Croatoan, and Spawn's like, what do you what do you mean? What's Croatoan? And he goes, it's the only clue. It's the oldest mystery in America about this disappearance of a colony. But Spawn is the one who notices it on the map, because they were like pointing at all different locations, and Spawn cuts out the star in the map. Oh. So Spawn connects figures out the, the star. Dots. He connects the dots. He Batman. had to contribute something, mm -hmm. so. Uh, what are you doing, Batman? You're the world's greatest detective. Yeah, and he's, he's playing second banana to Spawn. So, uh, Vesper in so Vesper's like reach is far and expansive and it controls like the power company. Do they both get in the car and have to drive together? I presume they do. Like, how is there enough room for all of those capes? <laughs> yeah, right? Well, they, like, there are bigger capes in this, yeah, and thankfully no one drives a car. To push. <laughs> I think the seats go down and they just fill the space. <laughs> Don't get your cape mixed like up with my cape. <laughs> Don't get your chains in my belt. <laughs> I'm just trying to imagine also that conversation, like it's a lot of cape. I I live in an alley with homeless people. I know, you smell like it. I hate I hate alleys. No, neither crossover. Mm. Takes advantage of the fact that Spawn was born in an alley and so was Batman. Oh. Wow. What a missed opportunity. Anyway, so they <laughs> shut the lights off in all of Gotham except for the alley, like the streets that make up the pentagram. Yeah. With the fucking tower in the center. I don't know if that's how electric grids work. Right, I know, but it does. So <laughs> that happens. Uh, yeah, they definitely don't work. <laughs> so those buildings all then explode and they cause fire. And so there's like burning oh fires God. in all of the buildings that like in each point See, now if they just of the did pentagram. That, that's fine. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's not light. No, it is light because we need to see it. There it is. Look at how it's illuminated. Maybe that's you don't think fire. it's fire? No, I think the, no, the fires are at each of the points of the oh, pentagram. Oh, it's not the whole line that's yeah. on fire. I see. So while Vesper gives a speech that is incredibly suspicious, <laughs> I'd be like, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. <laughs> does, does he say things like new world? Yeah, or... he says things like cleansed and... <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Reborn. Born anew, yeah. <laughs> Birthed in flame. <laughs> and fire and death. And he mentions blood at least once. But <laughs> while he's... We all get what we deserve. <laughs> yeah. You get what you fucking deserve. He goes, I want to welcome you to a new Gotham, a new world, and you will be at the very heart of it, on the oh. ground floor, as it were. Oh, and I'm like, no. okay. So, and, and we got, I made some room for some special invited guests who'll be arriving later. Oh, what no. kind of oh, guests? Is it no. skeleton? It's a fucking here. graveyard full of skeletons who start yes! rising up. Yeah. So after they untangled their capes. Yeah, so after they yeah. untangled their capes and chains, because look they at arrive Swan's at the tower. Cape. It's impossibly big. It's supposed to be. That's you know Spawn's cape. Hey, look, it's alive, well, okay? Well, that's probably what it was. It was cramped in the car. They got out. It was you need like, to stretch its like, legs. Oh, God. Yeah. Never do look, that to me again. I assume that if Spawn were to ride in a car like the Batmobile, or if he was looking at the uh, Todd McFarlane action figure line, the Spawnmobile, I assume the cape, uh, since it is alive, like yeah, sucks in. It just in. folds itself up. Yeah. yeah or it shrinks. It doesn't like want to do it. It doesn't want to do it, but it will. It's like holding its breath. So. I bet it's like accordion style. Like it yeah. just folds itself in angles and then shunk. That's how it does in the action figure. So uh, <laughs> Batman and Spawn get involved. They, Batman's like, I'm gonna find out what's going on up there at the party. And Spawn's like, yeah, but I, all right. And they don't that's coordinate. Like Batman's more like, well, I guess you can leave. Like, he didn't say that, but like that's right. how they, that's that's how their camaraderie operates. Right, so which is to say it that doesn't. doesn't. <laughs> so Spawn's like, well, uh, I need answers to my questions because I was tormented by the memories of uh, me murdering Simon Vesper, which I did not clue Batman into because I don't <laughs> want him punching me anymore. Right. Uh, so I'm gonna go into the basement and see what that's all about. So Batman's going up, I'm going down. You he's go like, high, I go low. He's like, that's right, I belong. Right. Yeah, in the basement, all in the below the surface. I belong up with the, the flying creatures and you below ground. Exactly. The cemetery empties, all the zombies are, or, or skeletons are filling Gotham. Uh, Gordon is flooded with calls. Uh, about skeletons? Can you the skeletons? first one, they're like, ha ha ha, and the second one, they're like, okay. Right, that's right. By anymore. the tenth one, they're like, Oh no. Oh. Yeah. Meanwhile, uh, Gordon has the bat the bat signal hooked up to a generator, and he's just fire it up. I hope the man's working tonight. <laughs> so Batman's like going up the building, and he sees the bat signal. He's like, ah, shit. No, one thing at a time. <laughs> so he's doing that. Vesper's getting more and more unhinged. Prepare for the dead shall join with the living. Like, okay, now check. Okay, yeah. that is a strange thing to say. Isn't that a strange thing to say? I, I don't really yeah. understand how that has to do with no. with business. <laughs> I, the other ones I like, could make work, but no, he says we will enter. Art or? We will we <laughs> will enter the glorious blood bought gateway to hell. And someone says, what is he talking about? <laughs> Just a, just a nearby person, and he goes, show gratitude, you worms. And then one person goes. 
that's crazy talk. And he goes, crazy? And then he pokes out his eyes with his fingers. Oh my God. And the guy's like, ah! This and unfortunately, is Batman is too little too late to save that guy's eyes. Right. So Batman bursts and he's like, Vesper! And, and, and he's like, oh, how quaint. I should have known that this like guardian of Gotham would appear. Well, join the party, Batman. It's just gotten warmed up. Like, <laughs> oh, my God. oh my God. So he throws like a lamp at Batman. <laughs> Ah, oh, yes, Batman's only weakness. <laughs> yes. A lamp. L light fixtures. Batman just keeps asking questions like, what is up with the bombs? Why did you build this building? What are you trying to do? What are all these people doing here? What does it do with Croatoa? <laughs> and he's like, fuck you. <laughs> Throw the lamp at him. Batman's like, this usually goes a different way. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I have some answers by now. Yeah, so while uh, Spawn is looking at the pentagram, it starts glowing and he sees that like, it is a gateway to hell and it's full of damned souls and like some crazy ass looking demon that's oh screaming in his face and he's like, oh shit, <laughs> it's a gateway to hell. What am I gonna do? And then he sees that like Wanda is among them and he's like, oh, it's a vision. Like it's not actually happening, but it, is, it will be a gateway to hell though. Oh. And uh, so he's like, ah. So Wanda's referenced at least and she's screaming and he's like, oh love, no, and maybe that will break the spell. Is it him seeing what will happen if he fails? I guess so, yeah, I think that's what it is. <laughs> Spawn is very egocentric, so I assume maybe he just projects Wanda in any task oh, he needs to achieve. Yeah. But yes, he's I just think crazy. that's crazy. Exactly. But yeah, yeah so but he's not eye pokingly crazy. Right. No. He's like different brand. Of very different, yeah. but still like same level. Uh, so while that, so Spawn is like using his, his his powers in a nebulous way to do God knows what. Meanwhile, Batman is fighting Vesper. Vesper fucking punches Batman in the face and then picks him up and throws him around. Batman's like, holy shit, this dude's strong. Oh. What the hell? He, well, he's like, he's undead. Yeah, meanwhile, everyone's trying to leave, but they found out they locked the doors, because of course they did. Yeah. And he's like, oh, no, you don't. So then Vesper, like- But how like, will the skeletons get in then? Right. So well, the skeletons are tormenting Gotham, more or less. So oh. Vesper, uh, then w with with uh, with the power invested in him by God knows what, or have the devil knows what, <laughs> uh, he fires some pink energy at the at the patrons who are trying to leave and like kills them. It, Wait, it is turns, he sucking them in? He's, sucking, sucking the energy right, in? He's, yeah. Oh, oh he's, he's just, getting more. Yeah, so Vesper uses that inherent power that we found in the graveyard. And, and they become them. skeletons? They become skeletons themselves, but not living skeletons. Those are the kind of skeletons that you normally oh. find, you know, the ones on the floor. I feel so, like they should the immediately kind of reanimate them. Exactly. Them. Yeah, I, well, they, and they, I'm sure they will. But uh, <laughs> so they all die and then he wow. turns like big and pink and he's like, yeah. Jeez, and now he's like, I'm like convenient pants. No, Batman and really <laughs> fucked up. That have somehow stayed on in all the places that well, don't get uh, us in trouble. He yeah, was gonna right. do this, so he made sure it stretched just enough. Oh yeah, yeah. just well, in the crotch region. They yeah. are tatters along, like you know, the the, the objectionable parts of his body. <laughs> so Vesper, now transformed into this thing, uh, proceeds to laugh maniacally, and then he is is attacked by Spawn, who shoots these like things that hold him against a wall that are what? made of green power. They just look like... Oh, he's like Green Lantern. He's making yeah, constructs now. That's right. And so he's embedded to the wall, and it's he's like, like... somebody at DC was like, got a description of Spawn's powers. And he's like, got it. Uh, and it's like, oh, well, he can create from green nectoplasm. Oh, Green Lantern, got it. Green Lantern, it. got it. He can make constructs. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're like, uh... Uh, sure. Yeah, so Spawn's <laughs> like... Close enough. So Spawn's... So, so, anyway, so so he, he embeds Vesper to the wall, and he's like, oh, okay, I win. You're now in the wall. Like oh, you're against the, the wall. I'm pinning the wall. It's over. And he goes, "Oh, my agent of darkness, you're here." And he's like, "What are you talking about?" And he's like, "Yes, I hired you to kill me six years ago, because huh. I was told by my benefactor that you would be a, an important role to play in my machinations here today, six years later." Oh my is it god! Malbolgia? It is not Malbolgia. What? what? Then who is it? And he's like, "What?" And I love Spawn. He goes, "You hired to kill me yourself? That doesn't make any sense." <laughs> That's, was, you know what, Spawn? Fair. Uh, yeah, but also this guy looks like a fucking demon, so maybe it does make sense. Yeah, well then he reveals that the Vesper persona, everything about him, is actually just a shell. And he proceeds to cast it off like a cheap suit and reveal that he's actually a demon. A demon named Croatoan! That's what happened to the colony. The colony was, was sacrificed or by this eaten. demon or eaten or consumed or whatever by the demon whose name is Croatoan. But then how did Virgil what? Dare come to be? Right. 
So then Croatoan and what? Spawn talk to each other for a while, and unfortunately, Croatoan, the demon, has like a really frustrating typeface for his fucking dialogue. <laughs> yeah, that's And it is sucks. just a nightmare to read. That's Thankfully, nightmare. nothing he says makes any sense or is worth reading. How is it so, not cool. Malbolgia? Because no one knows who Malbolgia is. How, oh, how is either of them know oh. who Malbolgia is? How is it not something between Malbolgia and Rachel Ghoul? Right, because that would yeah. be a fun crossover that you'd want to read, and this is War Devil. So that's Spawn and Croatoan yell at each other for a while, and then like Croatoan like burns Spawn, and he's kicking his ass, and but and Batman's like, uh oh, Spawn's in trouble. Thankfully, because this is a DC book, I'm gonna have to save the day. So he throws a couple of concussive grenades at Croatoan the demon, and that gives Spawn the advantage to shoot Croatoan with a bunch of necroplasmic energy, enough probably to send his ass back to hell, but who cares about that? So then Croatoan like shrivels up and becomes Simon Vesper again, and then just like falls down and dies. Oh my God, he's hit one time by green stuff. I mean, it's, from... it's a pretty significant hit. And remember, he was hit also by concussive grenades by Batman. Yeah. yeah that, that, but he's magic. He's a supernatural being. Yeah. Yeah, he shouldn't have even been phased but by But listen, these three grenades. writers are earning their paychecks. They say there's a sound like the cries of tortured babies and the gateway of hell slams closed. So you know this was a work of art. Tortured babies. A, la a labor of love, if you will. Because of their fight, a fire takes place and, you know, it's, it's starting to erupt, and Batman's like, there's fire! And then Spawn uses nebulous further magic abilities, which then send the skeletons back to their place of origin, and they could just crawl back into their graves like it's a Treehouse of Horror special from The Simpsons. <laughs> and, and like, uh, thank you, Spawn. Yeah. And how the spirits of Croatoan could finally rest in peace. That's right. And also this guy in a suit. Yeah. yeah, also that guy. And so Batman asks Spawn what happened, and Spawn's like, I don't know. <laughs> Basically that. He says, if you need a name, call it Terrorism of the Soul. Which, what? no. Uh, like, absolutely no. Stupid. But then, it's great because they both talk about how, like, people are evil and how, no. like, it's, there's great darkness in them. And Batman's like, yeah. <laughs> and then he leaves. And Spawn says, and there he goes, a man that gives yet asks for nothing, who knows what his real face is and wears it with no apology, oh the kind God. of man that maybe I'll be someday. And you're like, what the goddamn hell? That is fucking so Batman's bizarre. like, well, I am a well, bye. I'm standing in a room full of fire and a bunch of people who died. Oh, no, they have this I... conversation outside the building. No, I know, but before that, he's just yes, like... Yes, he's like, what the fuck? Well, I have to leave. <laughs> Bail. <laughs> like, well, all's well that ends well, I guess. He's asking me some kind of existential Jim question. Can to come into this room after they put the fire in? He's like, look, yeah. look at all these dead people. Yeah. What, was the, what happened here, Batman? Batman? Where were you? This is your greatest failure of all time. A hundred people are dead. In like a second. And you didn't help me fight skeletons at all. They just went away. Yeah. What was the purpose of the scene where you see Gordon turning on the bat signal? Just to show you how serious anything. things are getting. Oh. I think it's because they drew the cover first and they needed to put skeletons in it. That's my theory. This line from Spawn, you know, the darkness, Batman. I thought for a second he was going to say, you know, the darkness. There's a lot of fucked up things inside of it. <laughs> <laughs> that would have made my day. I, I, that was just it's, a direct quote well from it. I mean, it's pretty close. It's, Why is it called War Devil? I, <laughs> What's the war yeah, devil? Who's what? the war devil, Croatoan? Is that, Why? There's no war. No, maybe it's maybe it's uh, Spawn because he shot. And he somebody. was born from war. But that never. But, but that doesn't does, come does up. Batman address the fact that he killed him. No. No, because Spawn never brings it up. Well, why did Batman even have to see that? Yeah. Does Batman like at any point question like, wait a minute, how did this guy come back? I right. thought he was dead. Yeah. No. And like, there's some. It, between the two, I preferred the art in this one. Mm -hmm. But that art's not bad. The art's not bad. It's Klaus Janssen. It's Klaus Janssen during the '90s. He was, you know, he's yeah. only about. Like, he's less than 10 years removed from inking The Dark Knight. Mm. He's drawn a shitload of stuff. Yeah. It's his work, you know, it's his pencils, inks, and semi-colors. And, you know, there's some, there's actually some computer coloring going on in both crossovers. I think it helps this one more, mm. but it's really more subtle in this one. Mm. It could also be an opportunity for DC to maybe get some access to some of the image stuff, yeah. like the digital coloring and whatnot. Hmm. Next up is Spawn Batman, which is written by Frank Miller with art by Todd McFarlane himself. Frank Miller has not written another Batman story since year one. That's it. So for everybody, oh. it's like Dark Knight Returns, year one, and then Spawn Batman. And <laughs> nobody quite knows how crazy Crazy Uncle Frank has gotten yet. 
Right. So for everybody, it's like, holy fucking shit. Right. Todd McFarlane used his star power to get Frank Miller back in the writer's seat and give us more he, Batman. He hasn't done Strikes Again at this point? It strikes Again comes out during 9-11. So oh. much later. Like the first two issues are pre 9 11. The third issue is post 9 11. So is this like a peek into what's to come? Absolutely. <laughs> and I love Yay. it because in Wizard Magazine, they were like, fuck yes. And they made a jam piece cover, which you can find at the back of this. And the original one, of course, has two moons in it. <laughs> but uh, because. Well, listen, one moon's not enough. No, you gotta have two moons, one two for universes. Each character. Yeah. Uh, but people made fun of it. But Wizard printed the first one, which had the two moons in it, and it came with the Spawn Batman poster, which is just a big version of the cover, which right. of course is an homage to Dark Knight Returns. Right. Yeah. But which by the way, isn't fucked up because Frank Miller wrote this. Exactly. You, you can never have anyone jumping and lightning be there without it, making it. No. Oh, yeah. But it's also the first time we're seeing Frank Miller on Batman again since year one. Like, th this is a big deal, and it's really exciting. Yeah. I would have also accepted the image that we have over there on the wall that you can't see of Batman silhouetted fighting Superman. Yes. But like in sp but Spawn. But it's Spawn instead. Yeah. That would have been a really cool idea for a cover. It took a while to come out. And so McFarlane, you can tell, is operating like McFarlane Productions and drawing this. So I think what would happen is Todd would draw some stuff and then go over doing other stuff and then go back and draw this. Yeah. And then go back because... Right. There are some artistic inconsistencies, I'll say. Okay. That were baffling to young me reading this. Oh, dear. Uh, and are oh. still baffling today. I yeah. love I love when young Sal is baffled <laughs> and or like, I'm just like upset about yeah, something. Yeah, I'm like, what? Why? What? I can't wait. Here so, we go. And it's colored by Steve O'Leaf. I say that because I think the colors are fucking dope. <laughs> oh, okay. I think this is one of the best looking Spawn books I've ever seen in my life. Hmm. I love this book unabashedly in terms of its art. Hmm. The things that are drawn are dumb. <laughs> right, but, but you can appreciate that they are well executed. Absolutely. Oh, they are executed to the best of Todd McFarlane's ability. Right. Like, if you don't like Todd's art, you will not probably enjoy what right. you see here. Because okay. it's a lot of it. <laughs> and it's also enhanced by computer colors by a company oh. called Ollie Optics. <laughs> no. Ollie, Ollie Optics and Free. Because there's like 10 fucking names here. Okay. Anyway, so. Uh, the story opens on a cold night, a dark night. Wink, an unforgiving wind, a merciless city. Gotham, sin fucking city, here we go. Yeah. Yep. Yes. <laughs> At the waterfront, Batman beat the living shit out of some people, and he didn't walk away without some scrapes and scraps, because look at him. And we're seeing, by the way, like, prime Batman. We've only seen Frank Miller's Batman at the end uh -huh. and at the beginning. This is right. peak Batman. So right. we're seeing this peak is, Batman. His teeth are the whitest they've ever been. <laughs> we're seeing some silhouetting and some creative silhouetting <laughs> for this. We're going to see that a lot, so get used to it. You're going to okay. see some fun silhouetting in this. Uh, so there you go. And it's just like, hell yeah. Look at the look at the dynamicism of the, like... Yeah, he's doing like, a freaking... What's his name, Cape? Uh, J uh, Kelly? Kelly Jones. Yeah, yeah Kelly Jones. Is, we got, he's is, got the hooks. He's got the he's got the, the things that the cape would never do. You're not meant to read this. <laughs> I will say that because this. Musty air sucked into lungs filled with fire, blood surging from the heart to shoulder and streaming hotly down his arm. Not a moment it spent acknowledging the pain. Not a movement wasted. So anyway, Batman's in this waterfront. He beat the shit out of some people. He says, punks, you're lucky I went easy on you. <laughs> you see there's like eight dudes sprawled out everywhere. Yeah, right, I also Miller's see that they're Batman. like, they're utilizing arrows. Yes, well that's, that's just- That's never a good- Come on, look at that. Because Batman discovers these like, the, a, a cache of weapons uh, smuggled in here by- uh, well, Smuggling again, weapons? Yeah, bombs? but those, bu uh. yeah, but Batman let those weapons get smuggled in and those weapons were used to the fullest extent of their ability because they set those fires. Right. Like, that happened. These are crazy new wacky experimental weapons and oh. it includes battle gloves that hum <laughs> with the promise of power. And he checks them out and while he's like putting one on, he hears the hiss of something not quite human and it's a big effing robot that would not exist in any human space. And uh. it punches him across the room and beats the shit out of him and he starts bleeding from the face what and he the pops on these crazy gloves. Pray that the Soviet slave who made them knew what he was doing. That's right, <laughs> these, are, these are gloves made in the heart of Siberia by crazy experimental Soviet scientists. Oh my God. He puts on this thing, he faces the robot, he punches the robot in what would be its dick. <laughs> 
smashes it, and what does he discover but a face? Something confused, warm, soft, and frightened inside. <laughs> It's a human face and it's confused, doesn't know what's going on, and it's asking where it is. Batman proceeds to pick this thing apart, and then he climbs on top of it and pulls it open and finds that it's just a human head that is still alive, and it's asking questions like, where am I, and I can't feel my legs, and what's going on? Batman frees it from its bindings attached to this robot, Freeze but it? that's right. He's pulling on this human head that's, that's, that's cognitive and talking to him, and when he starts pulling on the circuitry of this robot, it triggers this sound, this E. And what he discovers is it's actually a self-defense mechanism in the robot. And so when he tries to free the head, the robot explodes and it knocks both he and the head free, killing the head, unfortunately. Well, it was just a head. Good. But it was still alive. We discover that uh, there's this woman, a new character invented for the story named Margaret Love. And Margaret Love is a socialite of some kind. Does She's that mean that Todd McFarlane owns Margaret Love? No, because this is an image comic. Frank Miller invented Margaret Love, and All therefore right. Frank Miller owns Margaret Love. Oh, okay. This is an Angela situation. Huh. So if Todd ever used Margaret Love, which of course he wouldn't, and no one ever will, Frank could uh, take legal action. Oh. Is she, she on TV? She Are is doing, on TV. Oh we're, we're doing a TV we're thing. We're doing the thing. That's what they do in Spawn. Spawn is like one of those things where they do a narrative convention where you see three that's different... That's also what Frank, Frank Miller does. also does. That. Oh yeah, well that's, that's a match it's made a in heaven there. marriage of... Styles. Exactly. She, she says a couple of vaguely fascist things, like she's bringing <laughs> self-actualization to the disenfranchised. Uh. The idea is that like this is like a training video or some kind of like recruitment video that Margaret Love has made yeah. that is encouraging the homeless to be part of her program. Of course, the head belongs to a homeless person that's from Spawn Alley, so. I was gonna say, that's gonna work out great for Spawn. Exactly. Or so, not. Or not, because of course she's an evil person. Sure. So Batman's in the Batcave, Alfred's there, he proceeds to, give Batman a hard time about not drinking his chamomile tea. Uh, he, he also gives Batman a hard time because he didn't take his mask off. And Batman says, sometimes I'm more comfortable with the mask on. And it's just, Todd goes, I don't want to draw Bruce Wayne. I'm here to draw a fucking Batman. <laughs> Batman's inspecting this head and he's like, okay, he's no fingers, no fingerprints, but he's got his teeth so I can check dental records. And he does, and he finds out that this dude was thought dead, but was just like caught up in the homeless situation of Manhattan. And so he's like, okay, what is this dead New York homeless man doing in the robot built by the Soviets? Right. What's that all about? Yeah, that's fucking weird. So I'm gonna have oh, to man. check it out. More silhouettes. Exactly. I, I really like the bats he drew and how they use different colors to denote mm. where they are in space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love this yeah. image of Batman, and I will tell you why, and it's because in Wizards' top 10 characters of the month, they always grab an image of a character from a book recently printed that features that character. And they chose this one, and they said, now we know what Batman looks like when he's taking a dump. <laughs> it's funny, because it really, like, for some reason, it makes me think of Sam Keith. Yeah. It's art. Absolutely. Well, because they're both, you know, they're peers, McFarlane and Keith. Really? They well, yeah, they came up around the same time. Okay. They're both part of the image revolution. Keith a little later, but Keith was still drawing like crazy ass shit for Marvel. Batman leaves the head and the crazy gloves with Alfred. He's there you like, go. You take these and put them on ice. Bye. Yeah, okay. So those gloves are coming back. Oh, yeah. Alfred's using Frick out these gloves. Alfred's not going to use the gloves. Oh. So we see it's like, Batman. It's like an elephant gun and a predator. Exactly. <laughs> so Batman is investigating. He goes to New York. <laughs> with his impossible cape. But, like, that's the thing. It's fucking dope. It's fucking dope, but, like, it's not alive. So, like, yeah. how does it work? It's artistic. It's interpretive. Damn, I wish that, that like an image like this had occurred when Barbatos was around. We gotta talk about the cape, because it's gonna come up. There's a lot of cape in this. Okay. Yep. Fully yeah. and crazily exaggerated capes. I love it, and I don't care. I, I've <laughs> never in my life thought, that's impossible, it would never work. I've never in my life that's thought about I that. That's all I think. I, I know, <laughs> and, and you're not alone. Like, most people I know talk about how impossible the cape is. I don't know if it's just because I'm a feeb, and I'm just like, oh, I don't care, comic books, we. Or if it's just like, maybe yeah, I was influenced by the style, but like, yeah. I, I think it looks awesome, and there's nothing about it I'm well, like, that, I'm, I'm complaining about. Yeah. Well, yeah. stylistically, it's supposed to be that way. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> the the only issue for me is that if Spawn's cape wasn't specifically explained as being alive, right. if Spawn's cape just was, yeah, and it looked like that, I'd be like, I mean, oh, it, that's it, just how he draws capes and that's his thing. That is how but, he draws capes, because he drew Batman before right, Spawn. But he came up with a reason for Spawn's cape to like 
exist and be able to do that I don't shit. think he even explains it. I think that's for us. I think we justify it by saying the, the cape's alive. Oh, it's not written anywhere? They say song? it's alive, but it never oh. says, and it becomes impossibly big because it is just stretching its fabric. Like, that's, no. That's not That's meant. not canon. Okay. It is canon that it is alive because right. it's part of the costume, which is alive. Right, but you're but, not meant to see it as an explanation for how that cape can exist and be functional for Todd him. wouldn't draw it if he thought there was an explanation. Like, he's just doing it because he thinks it looks cool. Right, okay. And, I and think it makes him right. look like a bat. Those, well, I mean, these, this the is cape is the same batty. as the wings. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah so Batman true. is investigating New York, and what he does is he's basically like learning about like the homeless situation in New York, or particularly in the Spawn vicinity. Uh, and what he discovers is like, you know, there's there's like a there's a there's a health center, there's a homeless center that's created by Margaret Love, and homeless people come in and they don't check out, you know. <laughs> While Batman is investigating the homeless situation, he's like hearing these urban legends about a guy named Al, one of their own, who protects them. It's like Batman's learning about a myth that's like his own. Right, okay. Uh, so how much is Batman's ass going to be kicked by Spawn? It is, we'll talk about that. Okay. <laughs> so Spawn's here, he looks awesome. Yeah, and that's great. The, does he have, does he, do you think he looks more awesome than Batman? Did no, it? he looks exactly as awesome. I was wondering if, if, <laughs> if McFarlane was like, I have to draw him at least 10% more awesome than Batman. I mean, I think that the way that McFarlane's looking at it, Spawn, is 10% oh, or okay. more. No matter what. Probably well, more. Someone, I don't remember who, attributed this book as being a, a trope or guilty of the crossover trope because there's a misunderstanding which causes the heroes to fight and then they have to make up and fight a common foe, which does happen, but neither of them misunderstand each other. <laughs> right, it's, not a, it's, not a, it's not a mistake. No, they get the full picture of who each other is oh, no, exactly and they're like, you you're an asshole and they beat the shit out of each other. So we get this sequence that is the impetus behind the Batman versus Spawn moment in this book, mm -hmm. one of two. And <laughs> it is actually an old Frank Miller trope that I think is first executed in this. It's certainly the first time I see it, but it's not the last. Mm -hmm. In which a couple of assholes decide that they're going to set a homeless wino on fire. The, the Just like each other up. They're right, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Oh, get the Billy match. Berserk! Yeah. <laughs> the flame starts heading towards the wino, and then it takes a hard left circles the wino and then goes back <laughs> and starts setting them on fire. They they evade the flames right. and they go right into the arms of Spawn waiting oh. for them. Spawn grabs one of the tortures mm -hmm. and is like, I'm gonna send you to hell unless you give me a good reason not to. And so he begs the other guy who's not in Spawn's clutches to shoot Spawn. He goes, right. don't do it, that'd be stupid. He shoots Spawn, there's three holes in him and he goes, like I said, stupid. <laughs> when you meet Satan, say hello for me a tiny burst of Hellborn power squandered. Oh, oh yes. They reference it. Frank read a Spawn book, <laughs> and more like Frank wrote a Spawn book. Yeah. So then uh, he burns them alive with his Spawn powers. And so they're just burning to death in front of him, and Batman just sees Spawn burning two people alive. So Batman sees this and he's like, all I see is an asshole in a cape trying to kill people. Yeah. And so he kicks Spawn in the back and says, you must be Al. And here's where things get weird <laughs> because we get the Spawn Batman fight. Yeah. But as you saw, Spawn's wearing a mask. But when Batman kicks him in the back, he's not wearing a mask. Maybe he's Whoops. so shocked by it. The, the, the costume mask. got scared. Yeah, and just and receded retreated into him. from his face. <laughs> but then in the next page, when Batman lands on Spawn, he's wearing his mask again. Well, yeah, because it, it was like, oh, okay, hang on, we gotta fight. <laughs> and that's what we have to assume is happening because otherwise you'll go crazy. Because what well, happened- just, he literally drew it at a different time. That's exactly what happened. He drew this page like six months ago and then he drew this page and it's a full page splash. So yeah. he's gonna put more energy. And also, I just drew the mask and the mask isn't really detailed, but the face is. And we're doing <laughs> silhouetted faces. Look at that. I mean, like, I love the image of Batman in full McFarlane art with his teeth and eyes illuminated. It's just really- He looks like a lunatic. It looks awesome. And yep. he should look like a lunatic because it's written by Frank Miller. Yep. So he kicks Spawn in the back and there's one good thing about murderers, Batman thinks. You don't feel bad about taking a cheap shot at them. <laughs> Classic. Okay. And so they have a fight and Spawn says, this is my turf, Batman, back off. Spawn knows who Batman is. You yeah. know. They live in the same universe in this world. Batman's in New York. How many rats has he eaten? Right, well he didn't have to eat rats anymore. He used, he, he ate the rats to uh, become who he was. Right, yeah. but I mean like once you've had the taste. The rats, that's true, he's, he's, he's aware of what rat is. Uh, so, so he doesn't want the tea. But I love it because while Batman's grappling with Spawn, he says, impossible, it's Al, he should be just crippled. But he right. pivots expertly. And I'm like, what? 
I, I hit him hard enough to shatter his spine. Yeah, wh what, Batman? <laughs> and it's like, yeah, you know what, though? He does that. But, like, you would assume he did that back during the Dark Knight Returns because he's older and more cynical and grizzled and he has to, like, right. adjust his tactics. Yeah, but no, no, he was already there. No, he was always a crippler. Like, <laughs> yeah. he was well, always hitting people on the spot. At least since now. Maybe not in Batman Year One, but sometime between then and, 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 now, and now, which is not that long. Yeah, but I love it because they fight. And Miller's depiction of it is great because he's like, this Al, oh, Al could take punishment of the superhuman variety. No need to be nice. Pulls <laughs> out three batarangs, throws them at three crucial places in his body that should be just short of lethal. And Spawn blocks them with his chains and catches one with his hand. He says, knock it off, Batman. I'm not in the mood. Whoa. <laughs> Oh, he's giving Batman what for? Yeah, we're seeing does, they're evenly matched. We're seeing Batman. Does not want to draw Batman's face? No. Because like, look at look at that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a shadow that's caused by the big cape. Well, he's he's uh he he's recognizing the seriousness, so he's no longer smiling. That's right. right. He's oh, keeping his mouth right. closed yeah. because he's like, oh shit. But no, he doesn't guy. want to draw his face. He wants to draw. Uh, here's the thing. Todd was under contract to draw Batman back when he worked for DC. He had to draw Batman in his uh, in his own style, but under direction. Mm -hmm. This is the Batman I've always wanted to see. This is Todd's ideal Batman. You mm -hmm. ask, does Todd want to not draw Batman's face? Fuck yeah. yeah. And he's Todd Who McFarlane. Face? I just made a deal with DC. They're piggybacking, they're writing some fucking thing. Who cares, the real show is this one. I'm taking two <laughs> books off from the series to do <laughs> this shit. Yeah, I'll draw Batman however I goddamn please. And you're gonna like it. And indeed we do. <laughs> so Batman pulls out all of the gas pills. Just, mm -hmm. he, he pulls out so many, they're falling out of his hands. And he whips him at Spawn to like make him be incapacitated. It's enough nerve gas to make a mob take a nap. <laughs> and now suddenly Spawn's a little slowed down and the two of them fight and he knocks him across the room. He says, had enough and Spawn's in your dreams. And then we get four panels of sound effects <laughs> indicating a fight scene. Of Todd being like, ah, I, eh, I, I don't uh, have enough time. I, I don't oh, have enough shit. space. I, you know how long it probably took to draw oh, yeah. the one yeah. page of Batman trying to cripple Spawn? Like, yeah, I, I need to make some room. <laughs> Here we go. Blah. Spawn indicates it feels like cheating using my magic to make myself strong to beat the crap out of Batman. And Batman's like, this motherfucker's gonna kill me. I better get out of here. So he throws <laughs> more nerve gas at him just to escape. <laughs> so Batman leaves, tail between his legs, and Spawn goes, yeah, don't you come back, you come back, you got your turf, I got mine. And Batman's like, oh, I'll be back, all right, you punk. I'll be back with enough flick to take you down. I let you off easy. Uh, so Batman leaves, I guess he loses, because he, yeah. he leaves. He has to retreat. Yeah. And Spawn he surrenders goes, the field. That's to, right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he, he, he concedes. Yeah. It's a strategic retreat. Exactly. Yeah, and, yeah because he'll die. <laughs> that's yes. tr that's strategy. Over. That's pretty strategic. Yeah. And Spawn goes, I showed him. Oh my God, what was it, that gas? And proceeds to throw up. Thankfully, because his mask comes and goes with the right. changing of it the doesn't winds, hit the he of the doesn't mask. just fill the mask, because that would be infringement on another character called Spewn. And Spewn is a real character in that book, and his power is he looks like Spawn and he throws up. LOL! Anyway, <laughs> so Batman like just licks his wounds. He's in New York, he has no base of operations. He's just in an alley. He doesn't go like, I'm in an alley, oh God! You, you mean to tell me Bruce Wayne has no office in New no York No safe City? house, no. The, the thing is, he probably does, but Frank and Todd do not want to show Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne is not in this. Margaret Love is like a socialite and a diplomat and has like connective ties to like generals and like aristocrats and Bruce Wayne would absolutely be a great avenue through which they could connect with that character. No, Batman and Spawn both just show up to punch her. That's their like interaction with this woman doctor. Anyway, so. That, that image of Batman is pretty good. Right, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like uh, Todd, if, I don't know if he's doing it on purpose or not, but mm -hmm. what he has, successfully done is made it so that like Batman's not a man he is at a force of nature yeah because it doesn't matter who's in the, the you don't suit. even see it yeah yep. you, just, you just see the suit and the cowl yeah yeah like that's Batman the thing is that matters. the man he's yeah. the yeah. character right but he is a he's man the... because 10 blocks out at, out from the fight his knees give out and he collapses in the alley and he has a very like he, he's very glad that he's in so much pain because it takes his mind off of the humiliation <laughs> that the punk he was fighting was holding back Mm. Oh, Spawn Batman. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Who's the jobber in this one? I think we all know. So uh, uh, Spawn goes into the 
healing center that Margaret Love set up because he's like, now somebody tipped me off to the disappearing hobos. So he goes in there to check it out. And what does he find? More fucking crazy cyborg robots. Oh, thank God. We're back to the robot. Things. I was, you know, I thought for a second, my God, where are the rest of these robots? Where are we these had robots? We all the skeletons before. Robots, where are the God. robots? You know what's funny about this is that in the Frank Miller Spawn issue that precedes this, that he wrote for Todd, like in just a random succession of events, he deals with a cyborg. Oh, I guess, like Miller just can't stop with I the guess cyborgs. Frank's like, and in the third act, there's gonna be a giant mechanical, mechanical spider. Mechanical, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean Frank wrote just Robocop really two, right yeah. giant fucking cyborgs. Yeah, I guess he just likes them. He likes yeah. giant. He's... He wrote Robocop Terminator. Where is his noir cyborg story? <laughs> oh. Right. Uh, that's called the Robocop movie they didn't make that he wrote that they convert into a comic book that is just fucking insane. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so it's uh, too bad. Uh, uh, yeah. Then essentially, what happens we is um, a womp, poom, rack a rack a rack a crunch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did Spawn that, fights this the, robot. Did I get the gist of it? I mean, yeah. you did. <laughs> Is Spawn like, why is there a robot here? Uh, he's not terribly surprised. <laughs> anyway, so Spawn like hits the robot with fucking magic Spawn powers, but then just picks up a big crazy gun and shoots it and obliterates it. Nice. And when he does- That is so this time period yep, of comic that is 100%. This is image, this is Spawn, this is comic books, baby. Big goddamn gun. The BFG 9000 is here. <laughs> Doom. So he blows just, this thing away. Poom. Yeah, it's true. Poom. So he blows the thing away and uh, the head of his missing friend, one of his missing friends, Chuck, falls out of the damn thing. And he's like, what? Where am I? I don't know where I am. And he's like, Chuck, what the f Who did this to you, man? And it triggers the Margaret Love recruitment video where she's talking about like rehabilitation and helping these people get on their feet. But really, she's luring them into, I guess, a chop shop and harvesting their heads and shoving them into Soviet-born cyborg robots right. to sell to the highest bidder in the international market. Why is the head such a crucial piece? Are we gonna find that out? It, it, it is not. I think it's because like, you they know. can't make computers good enough to run these robots. Yeah. They need like a human we intelligence. We need a human in the brain, but like the, but it's, it but belongs to a homeless person who doesn't know where they are or what they're doing. Well, no, I also the circuitry like causes it to control their actions a little bit. Yeah. It's like a, it's like our instruct computer instructions, which are very simple, uh, interacting with the more complicated brain of a human sure. being. Sure. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and removing his free will also. Absolutely. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. That sounds so about right. That's probably as the close symbiotic as relationship. Yeah, between yeah, yeah. Our computer code and his brain. So Spawn sees this like recruitment video or the video that's going on that would be going on in the homeless center where right. Chuck was lured when he and before he became a robot. This is the video he watched. Yes. The last video. Yes. He so you want to be a robot? <laughs> and not not unlike <laughs> not Batman no. Spawn. <laughs> There's another like You've villain. You've come to the right place. No, I haven't. Get me out of here. <laughs> oh no. And she... and it's a pyramid scheme too. If you go out and, and you get bring three homeless people with you, and they become robots too, yeah. you get to become our our diamond plus <laughs> robot plan, where you get like turrets and <laughs> perfect and and baby food to eat because you know it's Robocop. And ten anyway. percent of all the bounty that they take, you get you get that. That comes right up yeah. to yeah. you. You own your own funnel business. Funnels straight up. Yeah, you, you, you right. actually, you're making your own robots now. That's right. Yeah, you're making your robots work for you. So not unlike Simon Vesper, she gives a speech and he gets a memory <laughs> triggered, just like he did in <laughs> War Devil. This guy, he's got a lot of memories. Yeah. Of Margaret Love when he was Al Simmons, and he remembers being, it, there's no backstory for Margaret Love. <laughs> he says, like a thunderclap, a fragment of memory, the memory of Al Simmons' soldier on some ghastly foreign battlefield, and she was smiling. Men screamed and died, and she was smiling. That's all we fucking what get. What does that mean? What the hell does that what mean? What was she there doing? I guess that she- Smiling. <laughs> I guess- It says it right there, Ethan. The implication is that Margaret Love was some kind of like psychopath who was contracted by the military to perform experiments on soldiers, maybe? And then maybe she's moving her 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 experiments well, to why the mainland. Why is she so close to like the front line? Well, because she, she wants are pieces. Happening. She could I, accidentally get killed I, by I crossfire. Like what? I don't know. That doesn't make any sense. She should be sitting in an office or something, watching on a computer right. screen, smiling. Well, he does what say happens to these other people. He or her sick experiments continue. So I think the idea is that she is she's performing some kind of like 
psycho controlling experiments on soldiers and then she's doing that on the homeless as well. So the military was making RoboCops. Yeah, I guess yeah. so. I'm saying our government was trying to make the same thing. I, mean, yeah. I guess they gave up. I, I'm Maybe gonna they gave up. This. They gave up, so she went to the Soviets there you go. to bankroll oh, I love it. That's probably That it. sounds great, yeah. <laughs> but she's still. And here's why I'm saying that is because since Frank Miller wrote RoboCop 2, <laughs> This is like a dry run. Yeah, he's like, yeah. oh, maybe RoboCop 2? Actually, I have no idea when RoboCop 2 No, came RoboCop out. 2 is before this. Yeah. So it's more like, well, nobody yeah. saw RoboCop 2, I'm so I guess I'll just, I'll just do it again. It. I'll just make, I'll just, I, I, I just like the idea of a robot with a person's head in it. Yeah, yeah. he sure does. Yeah. But anyway, he's holding Chuck's head, and, and Chuck's just like, I can't feel my legs. I can't feel my arms. Where am I? And he's so upset. Like, Spawn is so angry that Margaret Love has been allowed to continue and that her experiments are affecting these people that he knows that he's, he feels this surge of hell power and he doesn't, he doesn't suppress it, he just lets it go. And so it's like he's just coming. Like he just blasts his hell power and it destroys the hell center and it blows up Chuck because who's gonna fix Chuck? He's ahead, whatever. Yeah. So he, he, did he but just it, use a lot of power then? Yes. Yeah. But, but like, does it even care? It's yeah, worth they, it. Yeah, it's worth it to feel, the, to, uh, to feel that feeling. So Sp Batman is like, fuck, the punk was holding back. Humiliating. Don't dwell on it. Just patch yourself up. You'll be ready when duty calls. And while he's patching himself up, you see, he, <laughs> he has like bandages like Marv, but he's wearing a cowl. So he's got to have the bandage like Marv oh over the cowl. cowl. What is What bleeding is it stopping? <gasps> This is just like, maybe I don't want to say this is Frank Miller's like, that's fucking stupid. Maybe he was, him like a maybe he was putting them, like those Probably. pieces up there because he was going to use them in a minute. Yeah, let me pe keep these here. Uh -huh. Well, the thing is, he patches himself up, but then when he then arrives, those patches are gone. Well, he yeah. doesn't want to show and weakness. Don't forget, this is also McFarlane drawing it, so maybe Todd thought it'd be fun. Maybe Todd's yeah. doing an homage to Marv yeah. by putting like, those look there. Look what I did, it's Frank. Yeah. Hey, look, and, and Frank's like, I didn't look at this thing. I just I wrote it and took the fucking money. Anyway, so Batman sees a familiar sight over the skyline of New York. It's a bat signal. What? Like, what? So then he arrives. And, and by the way, like, if the Batman is in pain, he doesn't know it. Like, oh, like mm. he feels good. Like, it's a, it's a piece of home. And so he arrives, and it's Margaret Love. Mm. And Margaret Love made the bat signal for him. And she says that, like, a security, because she's just a civilian, like, she right. works, she's a, she's a regular person, she's not spawn. Mm -hmm. She didn't burn people alive in front of Batman. Right, he has no reason to hate her. Yeah, so she's like, a security camera caught a man with chains and a red cape destroy one of my homeless centers. <laughs> so this, bat, this is a Batman who has no access to any sort of background checks on anyone. Well, he's in New York, he's not near <laughs> the Bat Cave. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, it sounds about right. But, yeah. Like, oh, he can't communicate with Alfred? Batman's thinking with the wrong head. That's Frank saying that Batman's suppressing the raging boner that he feels for <laughs> Margaret Love. She is beautiful. Okay. Or at least we're supposed to think she is. Okay. And uh, so, and I think the other She's thing is because because no, but Spawn also says that like. Her voice is mu like music hypnotizing. Right. Maybe she's a metahuman of some kind, mm. and that her voice is able to mm. like control the wills of men. Right. She's a poison. She's idea. a siren. Yeah. Oh. Either way, that would be your supervillain name if it were you know not used and also in this stupid book. <laughs> but uh, she says like, oh no, like my, my mission was destroyed, and like uh, we it, what's worse is we have this fundraiser happening tonight, and like it's rumored that the president's gonna come, and like. I this, don't have a date. Will you go with yeah, me? Yeah. Well, I need you to like protect me from this red caped chained jackass who's blowing shit up. All my dreams are in my hands. And he goes, he will be stopped, doctor. He won't get anywhere near that ship. That's right. Your fundraiser's taking place on a fucking battleship. A great what? place for a final confrontation. So This is almost a predator on a pirate ship. Hey, which is a way better idea and uh, totally has legs. <laughs> Why so would a homeless shelter be having a fundraiser on a battleship. No, 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 no. She makes, she's, she's, a, she's a jack of all trades. She's a renaissance woman. She has a homeless shelter. She's working on things there. She's also doing other things. And uh, she's, no, the, the homeless shelter is uh, the separate. smoking gun, but they're all happening in the same city. Like there's this, there's this terrorist who blew up my homeless shelter. Right. And I, I'm having this fundraiser over here. It has to be yeah, targeted, you right? You have to have the fundraiser on the boat to get the rich people to go. That's right. And then they'll the fund my homeless plans. Because they don't, they don't want to actually go to the homeless shelter. Yeah. I don't know, fundraiser on a battleship, 
very sketchy. Well, there's a lot of like military people coming to this thing. Oh, I see. So she just wants to make him feel at home. Exactly. Yeah. And if he's helping Margaret Love, then he's not the hero everybody says he is. And I'm like, what makes you think Wait. that he's helping Margaret Love? How did you get that idea? Uh, what? Oh, because I read the previous page. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, does uh, does he know about? Yeah, yeah I think he knows. Uh, yeah, I think somewhere in there. Yeah. yeah. He, he, he's a smart guy. Or there was a page where it became known that Batman was uh, helping her, yeah. and they just ripped. They that kept right the trim. They get. They kept the issues really trim, and I don't know why. Like. Your image, you could make the book 62 pages. It doesn't matter, but it's like, it's it's the same length. Yeah. Maybe there was a really boring page. Maybe there's page a, and, uh, and, and Todd's, Todd's just like, like, I don't have to draw that. that. Yeah, I don't have to Sorry. Don't Maybe there is a, like, something in a legal cause yeah. to make this happen. It has to be cool. They, no, they have to be the same They length. have to be the same length. That's fair. <laughs> and yeah, and they're like, we're not and wasting it, any more time or money also, on the it, DC one. It could also be like, Todd was like, how long was theirs? That's how long mine will be. Yeah. Because like, I'm not working for them. That's right. I'll yeah. show you what you can do with 48 pages. Well, yeah, also like, you know, I'm not going to do any more for you. No, that's true. I'm helping you out. Yeah, I'm selling you Batman books with Spawn. He is, unfortunately. Yeah, so like he might have just been like, you're getting the same length. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so while Spawn is just ranting about Batman, uh, one of the homeless people goes, kind of like Elseworlds. What? What? Someone goes, what are you talking about, Mick? What's kind of like Elseworlds? The fact that Al's referencing Batman. Because uh, they're like, Batman, right. Like Batman exists. Oh, so Elseworlds exists to them? I think that he's a fourth wall breaking character that's uh, meant to imply this is a intercompany crossover right. that wouldn't actually exist. Perhaps he's right. Tempest Fugonaut and he's just peeking into. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Uh, so anyway, Spawn's like, well, whatever. Uh, if Batman shows up, I'll kick his ass and I'll do to him what I'm gonna do to Margaret Love because now I'm on the mission to kill Margaret Love. And then we get another page I wish was a poster. Hmm. Oh. It's just so cool. Is it, did Batman just show up? I thought I saw his silhouette. Yeah, Batman was coming in. No, one of them goes, uh, Al, maybe you might want to turn around because what <laughs> happens is a phone call to Alfred and two hours later, a package arrives and Batman's ready for a round two. Oh. Batman's wearing the gloves. The gloves. Those gloves, it's they came back. just one glove. Just the one. It's, it's just, just the one, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so he goes in one. and we, I love this. Like, look at this. It's it, Spawn. It You're seeing it from Spawn's POV. Where's Spawn? Yeah. So Batman just beats the tar. And look at it. Look at the, how the mask jumps from like Jesus. panel to panel. Just, God damn it. Maybe Even he just, you, you know. Doing? Maybe yeah. you're seeing, you know, he's wearing the mask. Yeah. But in this panel. Oh, we're seeing how he feels. Like we're seeing the anguish on his face. Yeah. 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 Maybe. I mean, he wasn't wearing the mask when he was talking to the, the homeless folk. That's right. right. Like, That's right. He was, he was unmasked. That's right. Yeah. So maybe it's just, you know. Yeah, maybe said, it popped maybe back it on and popped back off. Yeah. Uh, so Batman and Spawn fight, and here's a here's a two or page he splash. Just screwed up and drew it in one panel. I think that's what happened. Yep. So Spawn and Batman fight, and it's just it's just a fight. It's the book is what you wanted to see. Spawn and Batman fighting. We got round one. They fought. It looked great. It's round two. They fight again. And I love McFarlane or company using their logos what, what is this? to break up the patterns just to show you like <laughs> this is a crossover with these two characters and these are their logos. I don't like that. I, <laughs> I, I don't care, but looking at it now, I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> like Spawn, I, I think Spawn. I know Batman. exactly Batman. what he's doing. This is one of those, this is an artist thing. This is him going like, you know, it's just three, pa it's just three panels. There's nothing to really like demonstrate what the what the gravity of the situation is. Like, what if I just throw the logo in there? Like, I think it just looks cool if we just put the logo there. Like, yeah, I, that's like all there is to it. That's all there is to it. He's like, like but if I put cool. the Spawn logo there, like that kind of breaks up. Yeah, I like that. But then, oh, but I could use the Batman logo because like I'm making a Spawn book, but they're giving me the license to use the Batman logo, so I'm just put the Batman logo right there. And I think that's it. I think that's all there is. So they fight yeah. and they say really stupid things to each other. Uh, but uh, while Which Batman's beating the tar out of Spawn, Spawn's like, oh, I'm gonna have to fight dirty to beat Batman, like I used to, you know, like, I, that's how I know to fight. Uh -huh. And uh, that only triggers Batman because he says, you're a sloppy fighter, you're stupid. No discipline. No discipline. And Spawn goes, you're talking trash, it won't help you. Stupid, no discipline. Stupid fighter, stupid punk. <laughs> So then uh, Spawn beats the crap out of Batman, and they fight, and they, it's, it's the sequence in which they, they punched each other into mutual submission. They're both just like, <laughs> it, it literally results in the two of them huffing and puffing, and Batman is just desperately clawing at the ground going, give it up, punk, you're finished, just look at you. And Spawn goes, look at you, you can't even get up, you're the one who's finished. Herpaderp. 
it, like this, this is stupid. Is a literal cartoon. Yeah. I guess this is also like this is almost sort of like meta for McFarlane to be like this is like to do this is dumb. Yep. This, this is, is stupid. This is stupid. Well, listen, Frank wrote it. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah Frank. That's true. Frank's the one who's like, "This is stupid." Yeah, these are cartoon characters, and they are just like. But it's the, Frank, so the, I'm like, children. I can't right. tell. Like or... The premise comes from no, because like we found out like from recent Frank Miller creations somehow, like dude's still capable of writing satire. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I guess that's true. I, the other thing is in this moment where they're like doing this, I don't know why, but Batman's off model and now looks like the Dark Knight Returns Batman. Mm. Like, look at how tired and old he looks. Yeah, and, and you how, can see his face yeah. now. And then you're like, but like earlier, I was just using logos. Like, you're not trying to say anything. <laughs> and look at how much. I just felt like drawing him. Look that at way. how much bigger he is in these panels than when he like literally just showed up. Like, he's. I think he looks like Dark Knight Returns Batman. It's also little years. You know, yeah. but like, wh what? Yeah, it was just he drew these pages at different times in yeah. different orders. Yeah, where are, where are the hooks? No hooks. No hooks. Totally different. Spawn just beat the hooks off. <laughs> <laughs> he, he beat him to another version of himself. That's right. He just beat the continuity <laughs> off of him. <laughs> so then, holy shit! That's so, the power of Spawn yeah. right there. Well, oh, maybe so, maybe another precious bit of his Hellborn magic fucking <laughs> like, imprinted onto him, and then turned him into another version of Batman. But uh, so the two of them are just like are just just trying to catch their breath. They're just huffing and puffing. Hang on, the I admittedly, I will think I, I do think he's saying something by showing his face because yeah. we haven't really mm. seen he's, his face. He's so he's been brought now down. Yeah. From the myth yes. into the man. Yeah. That's right. And that's why we're showing Spawn's face, too. Yeah, Except we've we, been doing it on and off throughout the entire goddamn book. Right, but book. you need to show his face in order for him to emote a little bit more. We need so. to show, yeah. like, he is tired. Yeah. And then the robots come. <laughs> Probably shouldn't have kicked the Don't shit forget, out of each other. This that's is a right. Robot book, yep. Three fucking robots show Normally up. they'd be fine, but because they just beat each other up, they're yes, weakened, they're too tired. and these and stupid robots can take them. That's right, and Spawn is like over there, so they don't even see Spawn, but they see how Batman. I'm sorry, how could they not see Spawn? He's wearing a huge red yeah. cape, and he has green glowing eyes. Because Batman's wearing an equally big cape, and he's in the middle of the alley, as opposed oh. to Spawn being in garbage. Over on the side. But, he just uh, looks like trash, it's yeah. fine. But these cyborg mind slaves sent by Margaret Love are here to make sure there's no loose ends. They're here to kill Batman. And so. They just, they just kill Batman. They beat him to death. They shatter his jaw and they burst an artery in his body. And he's just, he just dies. And what? what? And Spawn's like, oh my Christ, he's, they're, they're killing him. So then Spawn reaches all the way to hell to find the power to blow those robots into submission. He just blasts them. And he says, I hope you appreciate this Batman. And Batman goes, stupid punk, undisciplined. <laughs> and he looks over him and he goes, you're not making any sense, man. You're in shock. It's It looks real bad. And he's just dying. He's yeah. bleeding out, and he's just like, magic tricks, no way to fight. And his heart stops, and he dies. And Spawn's just like, it would take a miracle to save him. And so he generates one. Oh, come his on! And so Spawn brings him back to life. He uses his powers, whadoom. And while he's bringing Batman back to life, he invades Batman's mind. But literally, Spawn drops into Batman's head, and Batman's like, what are you doing? Get out of my head, you twit. You twit. And Spawn's like, Inspired dialogue. I could do that, but then I just have to beat the crap out of you all over again. And Batman's like, you didn't beat anybody, you little punk. You were on the ropes. You were finished. They, they trade barbs, and then Spawn's like, it's important that we understand each other for what we need to do about Margaret Love. Oh, Spawn's going to be the Spawn's the reasonable reason? one. That's right. So Spawn and Batman trade origins. Like, Spawn literally just tells Batman who he is. Oh, I thought for a minute you, like... They, no, they don't, like, see... Like, it's not like... They become them for a second. No. Like, that would be really cool. Like, but it, Al Simmons is, like, in the alleyway. Yeah. Uh, Al Wayne is in the alleyway. Yeah, little Al Simmons is in the alley. <laughs> Batman's, like, a, you know, an ace sniper working for the government. Yeah. No, it's just, like, Batman sees what Al's done and he just calls him a murderer a hundred times over. And oh. he's like, I was a soldier. I fought and I died. I wasn't some rich kid with a hang-up on bats. Does he call him good soldier? <laughs> but then he says, no, he goes, a, bu a soldier facing bullets. Bullets, your parents. Oh. And uh, as he's seeing the Waynes be killed, Batman's like, get out of my head. Like, no. And Spawn's like, no, not until you understand. Look at her, Batman. Look at her do what she did to those soldiers. Margaret Love and her mind experiments. Mm. And she smiled. Don't forget how much she smiled at it. And then he pulls them out of it, and they come back to life. We see like the same color scheme, so I'm like, okay, no, no, no. That's like we're we're seeing Part of my, we're seeing like Batman's mind, right? We're in his head. Well, so his so his mind is like this green stuff, yeah, and this blue stuff that you That's see. Spawn. Spawn. This is Spawn's, invading the mind. Spawn's stuff. Yeah, it's all actually. It's you know, it's not too dissimilar. 
from the reproductive system. Like that's like that's the egg. <laughs> this is the birth of the story itself. I think a little bit of Neil Gaiman rubbed up on, what? on, on, on Todd McFarlane. No, this, this, this is the egg of the story and there's two sperms, Spawn and Batman, in invading it and then birthing this story. Maybe. Or probably not. Probably so not. the two of them come out and Spawn's just like, do you get it? I mean, I know you're a little thick, but do you understand who she is, what she is, and what we have to do? And Batman's like, yes. Now get out of my head, you twit. And he goes, nothing I'd rather do, man. And that's when Spawn's cape is, I think, the most egregious. <laughs> yeah, it's everywhere. Well, it's hard to tell where his cape uh, ends and Batman's begins. <laughs> yeah, well, thankfully there's color They're having a cape off. Oh, yeah, hey, the horns are back. Yeah. Oh, By yeah. the way, I... How Batman got his horns back. I have never <laughs> loved Spawn out of the mask more than in this page because of how expressive he is. Mm. Like, it's a, like, mournful... Yeah. Like, it... He has no nose, but it works so well. And I'm just like, yes. Also, he's Batman from the beginning of the book again. Like he's not like mm. fat or bleeding. Like he yeah. he looks like he did earlier. You know, it's, yep. there we go. He looks like, he's got like cat ears. I know, they're short. They're, they're McFarlane's determination like, of the Dark Knight ears. wide. Yeah. yeah. Also, I love I, it. I like the fact that the panel shatters. That's fun. Yeah, shatters from their minds into the reality. But uh, yeah, so he's like, "There's nothing I hate more. It's a dead punk that won't shut up. Let's get to work." Double page splash. But instead of them being surprised, like in the last one, <laughs> they're just swinging into action. Look at them. Look at them tripping over each other and not being able to get anywhere near each other. The coloring is not as good on this. And one. I think it's because they're trying a thing. I think because this is actually, I think, a little more accurate to what they would look like in moonlight. Mm. Oh sure, yeah. And I think yeah. that's the problem is that like nothing like that is colored in this book. Like this yeah. is, this is a pr I mean like they should have probably made this a promo image as well. They didn't. Instead, they made this the promo yeah, image. Yeah, I get and that. And I love this. I wish it were, but like yeah, it's not. There you have it. So yeah, they swing they, into they, action. That's all there is to, that, that's all that. there is to it. That, that's all I have to so say. So Margaret that. Love is having her big meeting. Uh, the president didn't come, but everybody else who's anybody else is coming. And the uh, president, the president of America. Yeah. He just he just didn't come. He does. Come. He was gonna. Oh. oh, Margaret Love gives this big like speech on the, on this fucking ship. Yeah. yeah. And she's talking about like all these people, and she's talking about like, you know, how sad she is, and how like much hope she's lost because of what she's seen from the from the world, and how she's like got. How can anyone heal the world? Like it's an impossible task, and yet I figured it out. I know how to heal the world. The problem is people. Oh no, another speech that would make someone go, where are the lifeboats in this thing? Like, how can I get out of here? Is this like the Titanic? Are we gonna have a problem Exactly, here? but she's like, people are the problem. And she explains that like people are just, like, just crawling all over the world and filling it with all their crap. They're like a virus. A oh, virus. <laughs> she said, and I love the speech, I'll never forget it, where she's people, sweating, farting, meat eating, land destroying, cruel, stupid, murderous people. And I'm like, the only other mainstream book I've ever seen that reference farts directly with words is Frank Miller. I'm like, right. But just the idea of like, this is her problem. She's like an eco terrorist or something. Yes. But but yeah. then we see like the, the the you know the 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 bowels of the ship like open up and we see that like an arsenal for a war that was never fought. And a hush falls over the crowd as two generals trade high fives. What? Yeah, Frank Miller is saying that like Military generals are warmongers. They live for it. This is our Doctor Strange love moment, right? Where it's right. like Margaret loves. Like I'm giving all of you an excuse to start the next world war because we're doing it morally to justify killing millions of people and healing the world. Right, and and we have all these weapons left yes. over from the Cold War, which never happened. You know, happened. Yeah. So. What are we gonna do with them? Yeah, and my this. mind experiments will allow us to be able to control yeah. the population. Wait, how does? But what do the robots have to do with this ship full of weapons? Virtually nothing. Oh, so okay. what? What? <laughs> they don't come They're out ever just, again. It's just body horror and yeah, stuff. It's yeah, yeah. Show you what a bad person she is. Ellen to show you she's capable of marrying her mind control experiments with this like Soviet long-born technology. You know, like I'm going to heal the world using these two elements. Right. So, so w w will the Cold War weaponry and my mind experiments. When your plan is done, though, will it be that there's just there's robots with people's I, heads? I don't in them think. Running I don't think. Is I that know. part of it? 
I don't think so. Oh, okay. But I love it because she gives this speech and the general's like, yeah, and then the president shows up and I love the idea that like the president shows up and his friends begin to fill him in. Like, she's fucking nuts and we gotta get you out of here. Like, right. they're gonna start launching warheads and shit. Like that's, I, I assume that's what's going on, right. but like that's what, but anyway, so uh, Batman's like knocking out the guards and then Batman gets a blip in his head of Spawn saying, move it Batman, you're taking too long. And Batman's like, what are you doing back in my head, you twit? And he goes, I thought we'd coordinate our efforts. You know, we, 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 that way we don't have to talk. And he goes, you follow my lead, boy. I've been doing this a lot more years than you, and I'm a whole lot smarter than you. From all indications, you're dumber than Clark. <laughs> gotta get a Superman get, dig in there. Gotta get that in there, yep. And Spawn goes, who's Clark? And he goes, none of your business. <laughs> and so they break through the hull of the ship, they go through, and he, and he goes, you're a blunt instrument, kid. You go ahead and kick up all the noise you want. It's a wonder you can move with all those damn chains. What? You can't you can't make fun of Spawn's chains in a book that is exploiting Spawn's dopery? How cool he looks. Oh, well, I just did. I'm Frank Miller. That's right. Also, this is the first time that Sal, young Sal, saw a curse word in a mainstream comic book. They're tearing the place apart. Yeah. And Spawn sees the arsenal and goes, look at this shit. It could level a continent. <laughs> and I was like, Spawn said the S word. Spawn doesn't curse in Spawn. That yeah. book doesn't have the Comics Code Authority. We get it in this. Now, of course, that's probably what they're doing. They're like, no Comics Code. Hell yeah. No. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> so Spawn and Batman are just blasting. It, it, it's, a, it's a nightmare. Like, they sneak aboard the ship. They start blasting through walls. Batman himself punches a hole in what seems to be a concrete wall. Does he still have that glove on? No, he does not. Then how does he do that? Because we needed to see this, and then it they awesome. they're like they're crashing through the floor of this metal like hull, and then they find that the the, the cyborgs are there defending Margaret Love below deck. Hey, right. they're back! And so they just smash the cyborg. I love it. They go just smash the cyborgs and shut up. I'll do the thinking here. I'm like, aren't there people in these things? Wasn't weren't they a huge problem? Didn't three of them kill you? Never mind that. We just smashed the cyborgs. Well, he was weakened from the fight. Yeah, that's they, why but he got killed. But while so. while they're smashing the cyborgs, Spawn is just looking around. And he's like. There's nukes here! She's gonna kill everybody! What? Spawn was like, not careful about smashing the cyborg, and so it exploded and it caused uh. a problem. And so the explosion starts a chain reaction across two panels in which, like, it's going above deck and it's causing mayhem above. Right. And S Spawn is like, you be careful, old man. You be nice and sweet and careful. That woman's out to end everything, and I don't care if I die all over again to stop her. So Spawn fires a gun that he gets from somewhere. At what? At something. <laughs> and it causes a thing, and it falls towards Margaret Love, and mm -hmm. Batman says, no, you fool, she doesn't have to die. And Spawn says, why not? And Batman has no answer. And the piece of equipment falls on her and kills her. It stabs her through her body. And I don't know Yikes. what Batman was supposed to do to save her in this situation. I don't know what I, this is supposed to be. I don't understand where she is in space to have yeah. the, the next... No, and, yeah, and then she is stabbed through the body by this stuff, and it dangles her over like a precipice. I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt. She's standing on the edge of the ship, mm. and this thing is coming down on her, and mm -hmm. it like pushes her off the yeah, edge. She has and to be dangling over the water. It's not. It has to be that she's dangling over the water because there's, they're not high Look, up anymore. Look, it's all blue behind her. That's all the water. Mm. Oh. But uh, so she oh. is, she is on the the, the verge of death. Yeah. Well, she's and on the verge of death. Her whole torso is impaled yeah, well, it by a spike like this big around. She has a few seconds to die. So I she see. says, my dreams of a better world, a paradise. And she pulls a pendant on her <laughs> necklace that heretofore has not been addressed. Uh -huh. And she pushes a button. And she has, no, she has one last option left, this mad woman. An old weapon, a final weapon, a nuke. She fires a nuke from the ship at New York. And so... Well, Batman's like, that's fine, let's well, not go. Batman goes, a nuke, and it's headed straight for town. Do something, you twit. <laughs> and I, I will never forget this line until the day I die. <laughs> Hold on to your guts, Bat Boy. This is going to suck. Yeah, I guess yeah. it does suck. So Spawn yeah. teleports Batman and himself onto the nuke as it's hurtling through space. Oh, yeah, he can do that. Yeah. So they land on the nuke. Batman's hands have to stop shaking. They have to, his mind clears, it has to. Genius at work, a mind so brilliant it might have revolutionized the field of physics. Hands so skillful they could have served as a concert pianist or a safe cracker. Batman, detective, vigilante, savior. And he grabs Batman's cape 
And Batman looks over his shoulder and goes, I won't touch it wrong. And don't you touch my cape. Nobody touches my cape. <laughs> what? And then he proceeds oh to teleport the two of them back to the alleys where it all began. Right. And just Batman goes, your methods are revolting and your disrespect for human life is detestable. Your lack of discipline is nothing short of embarrassing. We will meet again. And Spawn goes, would you knock it off for like one second? Yeah, we just saved the city, maybe even the whole world. Like, when the chips were down, the two of us wound up on the same side. Why don't we just bury the hatchet? <laughs> and Batman walks away as he says this and then turns around and goes, bury this. And he whips a batarang into Spawn's face in the best looking image <laughs> of the book. Now, what's awesome and terrible about this image of Batman hitting Spawn dead center in the face with a batarang is that Spawn 21 comes out and in it, Spawn has a batarang shaped gash in his face, which is stitched up with a shoelace by a fellow bum. And from that day until the next time Spawn gets a redesign, that's the look. Like, the look is shoelace face spawn. And you're like, holy shit, you just carried this over into yeah, spawn. This happened and in when, spawn continuity. And when the bums ask him what happened to his face, spawn says he ran into some bozo in black. And then it says in an, in an annotation, <laughs> to be explained in issues 19 and 20, not yet out. And you what? go, um, no, it's explained in Spawn Batman. There's no other way to explain it. He has a batarang shaped gash in his face. That's it. But Batman was wearing blue in this. Yeah, you know? but. Well. Whatever. <laughs> Never and mind so that. In th then they did release issues 19 and 20. And in it, Spawn teams up with Harry Houdini, who is wearing black. And uh, he doesn't put that in his face, but some magic hits him in the face that's meant for his best friend, Terry Fitzgerald, and Spawn gets in the way, and a little bit hits him in the face, and then they just move on. Harry wow, Houdini. what? That's right, Harry Houdini didn't die. He's like a superhero or something, and he helps out Spawn, and the two of them drive around in his magic Rolls Royce. It sucks, and it's really frustrating. Because like, here's the thing, you're like, oh man, I thought this was in continuity. Yeah. It should be. There's no reason for it not to be. Right. And then you read the and forward. It definitely was. And then yeah. And then you read the beginning, and you see this weird thing about it. Spawn versus Batman is a companion piece to DC Comics' The Dark Knight Returns. It does not represent current DC continuity. <laughs> a companion piece to The Dark Knight Returns. That means that this book is canon to Dark Knight Returns, Year One, All Star Batman and Robin, The Boy Wonder. Superman Year One, <laughs> any Batman book that Frank Miller has written that is part of his Dark Knight universe. At this point, it was the third chapter in Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns universe. Or really more or less like, because for Frank, Year One is the origin, but it was also the new, the, 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 the post-crisis origin for Batman. So you could argue even Year One isn't in the Dark Knight Returns continuity. Mm. But Dark Knight Returns is, and Spawn Batman is also in the Dark Knight Returns. So this is this is the Dark Knight Returns Batman, or would become right. the Dark Knight Returns Batman. I mean, I will say he's written consistently 100%. with yeah. all-star Batman and Robin. Absolutely, fucking lutely And when you're reading this, you're like, why is Batman such a raging asshole? Yeah. Why does he sound like an idiot child? Yeah. Right, I w but which is like incongruous with the fact that he like could have revolutionized physics and he has the hands of a surgeon. Yeah, and, like, and he's also uh, a dumbass. Excuse me, the hands of a concert pianist. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, a concert pianist. Gosh. Yeah, but he could have been a surgeon. Yeah, he could have been a surgeon or, or a safe, safe or cracker. A safe cracker. Yeah, and then we end it just for good measure on another double page splash of Batman and Spawn. This time drawn by newcomer to Image and Spawn, Greg Capullo. Oh. Huh. And it's pretty good. And yeah. the reason why this is significant is because Spawn Batman 3 is coming this December. <laughs> and it will be drawn by Greg fucking Capullo and written by Todd McFarlane. So a, what? a writer who's never written any of these Spawn Batman crossovers and With an artist that. who never drew any of them. That's right. Yeah. Okay. We're getting it. And but Capullo has drawn Bat uh, Batman and Spawn. And that's the thing is it yeah. makes sense. And in fact, in 2006, they had solicited and announced a Spawn Batman 3 drawn by Greg Capullo. 
In 2006? 2006. Oh, so this what, is what happened? This is 15 years of the making? Yeah. And what happened was it disappeared. Nobody wanted to talk about it ever again. That's <laughs> it. That jam piece there is drawn by fucking Frank Miller. Can you believe it? Yeah, I can. I can see it. That's great looking. Which one? This yes. last. You, you can see it in, oh. in Batman 100%. Yeah, that's his oh, Dark Knight wow. Returns. Batman. But. Damn. Yeah. And it's great looking. Also, arguably the greatest comic book artist of all time, Jack Kirby, died around the same time, and they dedicated this issue to him. Which I think is insulting. <laughs> It's in poor taste, I would say. I mean, like, Todd worshipped Jack and used to cite him as part of his reason why he hated Marvel. Yeah. So I, I get the hero worship and the yeah, desire. I get that he would want to. Yeah. But, but also, like, that. it was it was really jarring to get yeah. a, a, an homage to Jack Kirby in this. Uh, yeah, but they treated this with a lot of fanfare and it was the number one best-selling book of 1994. Jesus. Uh, I should also point it's out in, that... But it's insane. It's and totally stupid. insane and stupid and looks awesome. And I will not apologize for it. I think it still looks awesome. Like, it, it, it has a, it, I've noticed the, the, the seams now, mm. you know, but I'll never stop loving how awesome it is. <laughs> I should also point out that to commemorate the upcoming Batman Spawn 3, uh, we're getting a reprint what? of Batman Spawn War Devil. Why? DC what? Comics in November. They're not gonna reprint this? Not that one, this one. No, DC has taken it upon themselves. Right, because they're like, well, that one's ours. We can reprint this whenever we want. And I think that's what it is. I think Spawn Batman 3 is an image book. Yeah. So who knows? Maybe Spawn Batman 3 will come with a reprinting of this. I don't know. And that's the thing is I'm so, I'm like, there's so much I want to know about the formation of these right. books. Where did this come from? Who, who came up with the idea? Who approached who? Please, now that Denny O'Neill's no longer with us, you can admit that this is a scheme to get you guys paid. Like. <laughs> You no, like I want to say that none of the writers who are credited in this book actually wrote this issue. <laughs> but I need to know more, and I'd love to get that information. But I will tell you one thing: Spawn Batman was the number one selling comic book in 1994, and Batman Spawn was the number 20 comic book in 1994. Oh my wow. god! I mean, that just which goes is pretty to show good. I mean, <laughs> how the art was driving yes. sales. Oh, yeah. and in the top 20 best-selling comic books of 1994, at least eight of them were Spawn or Spawn adjacent. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, so yeah. That, that thing was a juggernaut. He was yeah. doing them a favor. He <laughs> did them a huge goddamn favor. He did them two And favors. now they can return it to him. And yep. now they can help him out. I mean, he is making their toys and they are selling pretty well. Yeah. Uh -huh. Spawn and Batman, the clash of the decade. So says DC Comics in their promotional piece. Uh, I would say it was certainly the clash of the year. Uh, and of course, it would be a great harbinger, not unlike Spawn, because uh, 1994 was the year that the comic book bubble burst and multiple shops went out of business and uh, Marvel Comics uh, would file for bankruptcy, <laughs> uh, which is unrelated to any of these the things. But uh, yeah, there you have it. Uh, let us know which Spawn Batman crossover is your favorite in the comments down below. And we'll see you guys next time with another episode of Back Issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Tiffany. Keep reading. <laughs>